Hey YouTubers, my name is Eric Gutierrez, as always, a bit player. You know, there's very few games I remember playing as a kid. Some of those games are TMNT 1 and TMNT 2. And for today, I just want to skip number 1 and go straight for number 2. Some of you guys might be wondering why I'm skipping number 1 and going to number 2. And for that, I want to say that number 1 isn't what you would call a good game. And here are some 5 reasons for why I'm skipping it. The way some of the platforms are set up in this game, it sets you up for failure. <laughs> if Leonardo or Donatello die, you're pretty much screwed and there's no way of reviving them. This. And finally, it's so darn hard. I was never able to get past the water portion of the game as a kid, and even as an adult it's still super hard. So I never got to experience anything after this part of the game. And those are my 5 reasons. Now don't get me wrong, the game isn't necessarily bad or horrible, it has some good qualities to the game, but I just never really enjoyed playing the game, that's why. I'm kind of shocked Konami will make a game like this, they're usually way better than that, especially since the sequel is so much better. But wait, some of you might be wondering why I just mentioned Konami, when you can clearly see that this game is made by Ultra Games. Well, to give you a brief history lesson, back in the day, Nintendo will only allow third-party companies to release 5 games a year. Why you might ask? Well, because Nintendo was trying to prevent another video game crash of 1983 by limiting the games the company can release on the NES and giving them time to make quality games instead of really crappy ones. But Konami wasn't having it and found a loophole. Konami decided to create a show company, Ultra Games, so instead of only being able to release 5 games a year, they double the amount of games they can produce to 10. Some noticeable games made by Ultra Games are the Metal Gear series, q and of course TMNT. Okay, now I think I've gone way off topic. Now I'll go back to the game. The first TMNT game was a side-scrolling platform game. Number 2 on the other hand was a side-scrolling beat-em-up. And even though I'm going to go over the NES version of the game, the game was first released on the arcade. Hence why it's called TMNT 2, the arcade game. The NES port, while it doesn't look as great as the arcade version, and it's only two players, it did add two brand new levels to the game not seen on the arcade. So the story for his game is that Shredder's back at it again. This time again he kidnaps April and later Master Splinter. So all four turtles head off. The way the story is told by cutscenes, if you want to call them that. They aren't really that good, especially compared to the new guiding cutscenes on the NES. From the beginning select screen, you and a friend get to choose one of the four turtles, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael. The four turtles have different characteristics. Donatello has slower attacks, but a longer range. Michelangelo and Raphael have fast attacks, but a really short range. Leonardo is the well-rounded out of all of them, with average speed and range. Now if you ask me which one's my favorite turtle, I would have to go with Donatello. I'm not sure why, he's just always been my go-to guy. Maybe because since the first TMNT game, he's always been the better choice to pick because of this. At the beginning of the game, the first level you play is in a building with the longest hallway in the world that is on fire. And for some reason has a big problem with wrecking balls coming down the stairs. Seeing that it's a beat-em-up, you'll be traveling left to right, facing a lot of enemies on the screen where sometimes it can get really annoying if the enemies start attacking you from both sides. God, not to mention these robots. They are probably the most annoying enemies you'll face, at least to me. They aren't that bad, except they keep running around trying to tase you and shoot you and you just- Oh my god, stand still! That's why the technique that always works for me is to jump and do a flying kick. Works for me all the time. Other than that, you have your standard B attack, and you can do this mid-air attack. That's pretty much about it for attacks. The stages in this game can seem kind of boring, there's nothing that really stands out. Except for Frosty the King Robot in stage 3-1, and of course the skateboard level in 4-2. What I think that doesn't help is that you seem to face every single type of Foot Clan member in every stage. So the enemies don't really make the stages stand out. And when facing the Foot Clan members, they're either close quarter combat people, 
or the more annoying projectile enemies. Again, if you stop them from going at both of your sides, you should be just fine. But again, it is easier said than done. Just as a side note I want to mention before talking about the bosses, is where you can consider the stage hazards in stage 3 too. And I'm talking about those cars that just move out of nowhere and catches you off guard. It's really annoying because unless you know what car is going to get you, out of the many you see in the level, you're going to take some damage and it's just really frustrating when you only have one life left and you die and yet start the level all over again. <sighs> For the bosses I kind of have mixed feelings about. Some bosses gave me trouble defeating, but I learned quickly. But then some I felt were kind of a joke by how easy they were. Just look at these two bosses where I'm just spamming the jump trick and I'm having no trouble defeating them. Where these two on the other hand actually counterattack when I tried doing the jump trick. Like I said, mixed feelings, some are good, some are bad, still enjoyable. A funny note is that while playing this game, you see Pizza Hut all over the game. And as a kid, I thought it was funny seeing it around the game. I just assumed because turtles love pizza, and Pizza Hut is a pizza place, they decided to throw it in the game. It wasn't until I started collecting and actually found a box for the game that I saw that Pizza Hut actually advertises in the game. And you yourself can get your own free pizza if you bought the game. I guess it was their own way of brainwashing kids into making their parents keep Pizza Hut. I guess doing this review got me kind of hungry. I should go see if the coupon set works. Or if a shop. Yes, I want to get a large personal pan pizza, but I have a question now. I have a complete box TMNT2, the arcade game, and the menu is still intact, but the coupon that says I can get a free pizza. So uh, how exactly does that work? What, mate? Get rigged, son! So that didn't work. TMNT2, the arcade game, is a really good beat-em-up. I definitely recommend it that you play it with a friend. And luckily for you guys, the game isn't really that expensive, especially when you compare it to TMNT4. And for those of you guys that are interested in playing the original arcade game, I know TMNT2 Battle Nexus actually has the original arcade in the game, but it's only available after you do some mission or whatever in the game. And that's it for today guys. If you like this kind of video, let me know in the bottom section down below, comment section down below. And if you want, you don't have to, you can like, share with friends, and subscribe, subscribe. And again, thank you for watching these videos. I like doing them. And that's it for today. Till next time.